Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 13 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, Second Edition. So in this video, we're going to look at something called the Independence of Irrelevant Alternatives, or IIA. So multinomial logit assumes, some, assumes IIA. What this means is that the ratio of the outcome probabilities, so the probability of someone choosing a specific outcome, um, of two alternatives, or right, like the probability of choosing between two alternatives, is not affected or is independent of either removing or adding an, another alternative. Um, and so I try to give two examples. One, I think, is really clear. <laughs> I tried to be clear. We'll see <laughs> See if you think it's clear uh, in the chapter, uh, where it's sort of like a dis decision theory kind of setup about choosing between things. Um, the problem here is that we're talking about probabilities, and they're, they're a little trickier. So multinomial logit assumes IIA and this allows for, for much simpler estimation to occur. Uh, the problem is that we often violate IIA. Uh, when this happens, we can't trust the results. So multinomial probit, which we'll look at in the next video, doesn't assume IIA, which is great. Uh, the problem is that the estimation of multinomial probit is fairly uh, difficult. And so I, I include a, 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 a quote from, from, a, from a book from the late 90s saying, um, you know, this is, this is great, um, but no, no one has a computer, you know, a desktop computer, laptop, whatever, that can actually get the estimate. <laughs> I mean, so that's changed, obviously, as computers become faster. But it's still very sort of tricky. So what people do is usually um, usually people just use multinomial logit and either don't test or don't care about IAA, for better or worse. Um, all right, so let's do a, um, a example here of testing for it. It's somewhat involved. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to create, we're going to estimate two models, uh, one kind of our regular model, and then one where we are uh, going to change the outcomes or the outcome options. Okay, so um, we for this, we're going to use the mlogit package and the mlogit function. Um, so let's first load that. So library and logit. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to specify our data structure. So this is a little this is a little weird. Um, this is why I was saying that mlogit is not as straightforward as as multinomial sorry multinom function. Um, we need to specify what our data looks like. Okay. The reason why is because mlogit, because it's flexible, um, it allows us to include our sort of standard variables that we've been using this whole time, which are known as case-specific, uh, meaning that each observation has one row, right? One value for each, each variable. But it also allows for alternative-specific, where a, a observation can have multiple values for... Um, for each outcome, or sorry, for each, for the, for the outcome variable. So so there's a different value corresponding to the different outcome uh, category. Some some fields alternative specific data is is available. A lot of fields it's not. <laughs> um, so it really depends how much you. Uh, it really depends on the field of how much you actually you will be using alternative specific. All right, so we need to to set our data, and and so I'm going to save the this this data as IIA dot, sorry, IIA dot data. All right, and we're going to use this function df idx. This is from the m mlogit. 
um, package start. There we go. Okay. All right. So yeah, this pulls in. So mlogit pulls in this package, and we also see that it it um, masks or overrides the select and filter function that we have. Um, all right. So we're going to specify the data that we have. So SSA, and then shape is wide. So our it's it, we're setting our data's wide format versus long. Um, long is the one where we have is the alternative specific one. Um, varying equals null again, corresponding to the alternative specific. And then we're going to include here choice equals PID. Okay. Um, choice is, is in this phrasing, choice is our outcome variable. So our choice variable, like what, what defines the choices. Okay. So let's run that. We have that. All right. Now we can do the. Uh, actual model. So first let's do just like the standard. Let's just take a look at what the results uh, look like with using the mlogit function. Okay, we're gonna do mlogit. Um, so that's the function really easy. Uh, I'm saving it as model dot logit one, and then PID tilde, and then we're gonna do zero. And this, this part is corresponding to saying that we do not have any alternative specific uh, variables. So we have tilde zero and then horizontal line and then Scott plus trust plus age and then data equals IIA data. Okay, so this part is our sort of case specific or our standard uh, variables. That should go away, right? One, two, yeah. That should go away. What am I missing? All right, it does. Okay, here are the results. I'm gonna pull this up so we can see it a little better. Um, okay, so, so the nice thing about this is that the information it gives you, the mlogit functions information, is much fuller and clearer about what's happening. Um, much better than, than multinom. Uh, one, it gives us sort of the frequencies of the choices. And then the output here for the regression is much more similar to what we're used to, right? Um, where we have the redundant information and we have our favorite stars. Okay. Um, we can look closer, but w we'll find that the results are the same as multi as the ones from multinom. Um, one thing I just want to point out, which I had mentioned pre in a previous video, come on, I'm trying to highlight it. It's not really letting me highlight it. Um, this McFadden R squared, this is a uh, pseudo R squared measure. Uh, this is just one of them. Um, again, pseudo R squared measure is constructed like a R squared measure from linear regression, but it doesn't tell us um, the amount of variance explained in the, in the outcome variable. Um, so I hate looking at them, <laughs> so, but I know it's a little, con it's a little confusing down there. Um, okay. I'm going to pull this back. All right. And we're going to carry out the IIA test. So we're going to use something known as the Hausman McFadden test. And to do this, what we're going to do is run two versions of our model. Um, one, which is our regular model. And then a second one where we are going to remove one of the options in the outcome variable. So the example I give, give here is, is not the best because we only have three options. If we remove one, that's really just binary logic. Um, but the idea is, the idea of the test is that the, the estimates that we have from um, our regular model um, should be the same in a version that we remove a outcome, um, what, what's called a restricted model. 
So, so if that's the case, then we don't violate IIA. If they're different enough, then we do. All right, so I guess we could just save this. What I'm going to do is just steal it and be a little more specific here. Um, because we are going to specify the uh, baseline category. So by default, again, the, the, the first category here of the outcome variables is used as the baseline. Um, I'm going to show you how to change that here. All right. So I'm going to save the first one. This is just our original one here. Um, so we have all this, okay. And then there's an option in the mlogit function called ref level. And that a lot, that's a really simple way of changing what the baseline is. We're going to keep the same one, uh, but this is just good to specify it. All right. so. I'm, we're not going to look at the results just because they're going to be the same as what we just saw. Um, but we're going to save them as x1. You can save them whatever we want. And then we're going to do another version here where we remove SNP. Do save that as x2. So we're going to keep the ref level, but then we are going to we're going to include this option alt dot subset. And so what this does is that it changes the outcome. Um, categories, what sort of outcome categories are being compared um, in our outcome variable PID. So we're just going to keep one dot conservative and two dot labor. So we're we're saying like keep those, just do just compare those. Okay, so let's highlight that. Save it as X2, and then we're going to carry out the um, Houseman McFadden test. All right, so this is H, oops, sorry, HMF test. And then we do X1, X2. All right, here are the results down here. Um, we see it gives us the alternative hypothesis, right? So that says IIA is rejected. Um, so the null would be IIA is not rejected. So we're looking at the p-value. Um, if the p-value is equal to or below 0 0.05, we reject the null that IIA is not rejected and accept the alternative that it is. So here it is above 0 0.05, so we don't reject the null and we conclude that we do not violate IIA. Again, this isn't a Act, this isn't a perfect example just because we were this x2 is just um, this is the uh, just binary um, so it's probably not the, the best example okay so since we didn't violate IIA um, we would be fine using multinomial logit if we do violate IIA then we should use multinomial probit um, if, if we can, <laughs> you'll see why, if we can. All right. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.